Hey, welcome to the after show when we're talking all about chat GPT and your podcast. So you may have heard about chat GPT in the news or on a podcast episode or even on social media. And so what I want to do is how I want to tell you how you can use it in your podcast promotion processes to streamline and save you time. All right, let's jump in. So chat GPT, I talk all about this on Don't Wing It episode 71. And so if you want to listen to that, click the link down below and you can listen to the whole entire podcast. It's about 25 minutes where I go deep with that. But what I want to tell you is that I get passionate as a faith-based entrepreneur. I get really passionate about telling, um, using tools and and Apple podcast uh, marketing tools for your podcast and chat GBT to make your streamline process even uh, more quickly than you maybe are doing now. And so I want to do that, but I really want to share with you why you can't put all your eggs in one basket of chat GBT. You need to use it. It is a tool. It is a great way. The best way I like to use it is with um, titling your episodes. It is a great way to give descriptive podcast titles to your episode. And so that is the best. You'll hear other ways you can use. There's five ways you can use ChatGPT specifically for your podcast process, but that is my favorite is using it for to, to list your, your episodes or to name your episodes. But one thing I really want to be clear about is that you cannot use this tool or put all your eggs in one uh, chat GBT basket forever because your individual unique voice needs to come through. And so I know a lot of copywriters are really nervous about chat GBT, but they shouldn't be because it can only do so much. I remember I was searching on chat GPT. I went to openai.com. I went to chat GPT on the lo lower left-hand corner and I typed in a search item on in the search bar and then I typed it again and then I typed it again. Here, Here's what I did. You want me to tell you? Okay, in Cetrac, I searched uh, 10 questions to ask speaker Christy Wright. And then I asked 10 questions to ask video coach Virginia Kerr. And then I asked 10 questions to ask Ren Robbins podcast coach. And it was really interesting because on the first one with Christy Wright, it said, what would you say to the person who is uh, going to start speaking? How did you do mom life balance? So it did take what her last book was, Take Back Your Time. And it she talks a lot about um, uh, time and life balance uh, and work balance. And so it did hone in on that. Okay. Um, but it, when I looked at search Virginia Kerr, 10 th questions to ask her and then 10 questions to ask me, it was really mirroring the same mirroring. I can't say that mirroring the same type of questions. Of course, it didn't say, um, uh, Virginia, um, what is work-life balance look, look for you with, t uh, your book, take back your time. Of course it didn't do that because that's under book. Um, but it did say for Christy, it said mistakes um, that you've made as a speaker coach. And then it said also for Virginia, one of the questions was, what are your mis top mistakes that you made? Da, 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 da. And then on mine, what are the top mistakes you made as a, a podcaster early on or whatever? So I want, you know, the more you dig into it, you will see that there is some repeatability in there. And it was just really interesting to see that for myself. Now, are those good questions? Absolutely. If I didn't have time to research, I know with my first podcast, I had, um, I really, I don't want to say prided myself because that sounds um, selfish, but I really put a lot into, I really took um, a lot I wanted it to be meaningful. And so I wanted questions that nobody else would ask. And so I did that and I put that in my research. But if I wanted to have a few questions from this to toss in, I could do that. Um, and so I, I want you to know that you can use it, but it is a tool and it is not the 
all of you and your unique God-given gifts and talents. And so I want to say that is that is really what I want to share with you on this after show is that go listen to the episode of the five things it can do and the one thing it can't do. And I'll give you a hint. It's not, it's, it's, it can't be unique. It can't be you. Okay. But if you know all those things and you can say, Hey, I can use this to streamline my processes. And then you put, you know, you use it for that, maybe a brainstorming session, and then you take it and make it your own. You make the blog post your own, you make the title your own, you start with the title and then you zhush it up. <laughs> and so that's when your uniqueness comes out. And so I did a episode last week on Don't Wing It about Ikea. And that's really, I did it on purpose to show you the consumer, the listener that our unique, our uniqueness is something that people come to hear on your podcast. And so don't, don't use a tool fully without putting your own uniqueness in that, in your content, because people are coming to your podcast because of you. Yes, sure. They're going to get great content. Yes. They're going to get value. Yada, yada. They want to hear about a podcast. If they're listening to my podcast. Yes. But they're really coming for you. That's why they hire you. That's why they come and listen to your podcast is for your unique twist on it. And so don't think that chat GPT is going to be, it's it's the be all for all. It's not, okay? You're unique. God has created you uniquely and your unique gifts, uh, we need to see. We need to see them bold and bright on your podcast. All right. Remember to subscribe and top the bell, tap the bell so you can hear the next after show video next week. I hope you have a great day.